Hi, I'm Torben Janssen from thoughtsonjava.org. Java 8 brought lots of great features, and one of the most important and most anticipated one was the new date and time API. There were lots of issues with the old API, and I won't get into any details on why we needed a new one. I'm sure you had to struggle often enough with it yourself. The new date and time API is much better. It's well designed, easy to use, and finally immutable. The only issue that remains is that the JPA standard doesn't support it. Well, that's not completely correct. You can use it, but JPA will map it to a blob instead of a date or timestamp. That means the database is not aware of the date object and cannot apply any optimizations for it. That's not the way we should or want to do it. But that doesn't mean that you can't use the date and time API. You just have to decide how you want to add the support for it. You either use Hibernate 5, which provides proprietary support for the date and time API, or you take a few minutes to implement an attribute converter like I show you in this video. Why does JPA not support local date and local date time? The answer is simple. JPA was released before Java 8, and the date and time API simply didn't exist. The temporal annotation can only be applied to attributes of type Java Util Date and Java Util Calendar. If you want to store a local date attribute in a date column or a local date time in a timestamp column, you need to define the mapping to Java SQL Date or Java SQL Timestamp yourself. With an attribute converter, you can do that with just a few lines of code. Before we jump into the IDE, let's quickly talk about attribute converters in general. They were introduced in JPA 2.1 and allow you to define the conversion between Java and database attribute types in a standardized way. You can use them to convert all basic attributes defined by entity classes, mapped superclasses, or embeddable classes. The only exceptions are ID attributes, version attributes, association attributes, and attributes annotated as temporal or enumerated. Okay, that's enough theory. Let's have a look at an attribute converter that maps a local date to a Java SQL date. As you can see here, the implementation of an attribute converter is not that complicated. You need to implement the attribute converter interface with its two methods convert to database column and convert to entity attribute. As you can see on the method names, one of them defines the conversion from the type of the entity attribute to the database column type, and the other one the inverse conversion. In this case, the entity attribute is of type local date, and I want to convert it to a Java SQL date. Hibernate and the JDBC driver will then be able to persist it. The conversion itself is very simple because Java SQL date already provides the methods to do the conversion to and from a local date. You also need to annotate the attribute converter with a converter annotation. I want to use this converter for all entity attributes that are of type local date and therefore set the optional auto apply attribute to true. If you don't do that, you have to annotate the entity attributes with a convert annotation to activate the attribute converter. That's all you have to do to implement the attribute converter. Hibernate will apply the conversion transparently so that you can use the local date attribute like any other entity attribute. Here you can see an example in which I use it as a query parameter. As you can see, it doesn't require any special handling. I just call the setParameter method with the bindParameter name and a local date object as a value. And here you can see that Hibernate executed the query, used the converted local date objects as bind parameter values, and mapped the query result to an entity. 
The attribute converter for local date time is basically the same. You implement the attribute converter interface, set local date time and timestamp as type attributes, and annotate it with the converter annotation. The Java SQL timestamp class already implements the required conversion methods so that you just need to call them in the convert to database column and the convert to entity attribute methods. And you can then use the attribute converter in the same ways as I showed you before. Okay, that's it for today. If you want to learn more about Hibernate, you should join the free Thoughts on Java library. It gives you free access to a lot of member-only content, like an ebook about the Java 8 support in Hibernate 5. I'll add the link to it to the video description below. And if you liked today's video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe below.